Thank you very much. Um, so today we've talked about a, a lot of different um, programs at, at these institutions, and what I'm going to focus on really is uh, is a program um, specifically at NRL um, dealing with technologies to, to make fuel. And so before I continue on, I just this is our team here, and the the technologies I'm going to introduce to you today that are very specific would not be possible or in the state that they're in without this group of people along with our uh, university and industrial collaborators. So we are the Naval Research Laboratory and we're solving problems specifically for the U.S. Navy. And the type of problem that we're trying to solve is essentially um, the cost of fuel stability for the Navy. It, it, its fluctuation makes it very difficult for the Navy to do long-term budget planning. And also, we have to rely on unf unfriendly sources for this fuel. And then there's the cost of delivery and the logistic tail as we move fuel all around the world to areas of operations. So these are the, the problems that the Navy faces and DOD faces as well. So what NRL has come up with in, in trying to solve these problems is, you know, what if you could make a designer fuel when and where you needed it? Um, how could you make it at sea or in a remote location um, such as an island near the areas of operation? So in theater fuel production, it really is a game-changing proposition. It would uh, translate into, the, into freedom of action for the warfighter, reduce logistics tails, stabilize the fuel uh, cost for the Navy for future budget planning, and it would minimize our dependence on you know, foreign sources of fossil fuel. So how are we going to make... Um, fuel in the area of operations. Where are we going to get the components? So today I'm going to talk to you about technology to get carbon dioxide and hydrogen out of seawater. And really the limitation is our electrical source. How are we going to, we need, we need energy to get this. And once we have the CO2 and hydrogen and electrical source to get those, we can make a designer fuel and we can um, power any of the Navy's platforms with that. So so how do we get carbon dioxide efficiently out of seawater, and how can we convert it to a hydrocarbon fuel? So I'm going to introduce you to NRL's patented electrolytic cation exchange module, and then our second step is to take the CO2 and hydrogen and do a catalytic process. It's a, thermo, it's a thermochemical catalytic process to take it to a fuel. So why, you know, we focus mainly in what you hear out in, in research and the focus has been in getting CO2 out of the atmosphere, out of air, and out of stack gases. Well, we're the Navy, we're at sea, and we're in littoral environments, and it's 140 times more concentrated in seawater versus air on a weight per volume basis. And what happens is CO2 is in constant equilibrium with the ocean. Um, it turns itself into carbonic acid, which is in equilibrium with carbonate and bicarbonate here in the ocean. And so what the NRL technology is targeting is this buffered system, and we're going after this carbonate and bicarbonate in the seawater and turning it into carbon dioxide. And what we end up leaving behind is seawater that is slightly more basic that can take in more CO2. So... We started out in the laboratory at a TRL level three, passing about 140 milliliters of seawater through this device here. And this is the inside of the device and the components of it. And what we ended up doing is, if you look, here's the chemical reactions. We have an anode and a cathode here, and we pass the seawater through this central compartment. And what we're doing is we're creating protons at this anode which essentially acidifies the seawater. So below about a pH of 6, you start to acidify the seawater, and you turn all that bicarbonate into carbonic acid, and you can pull it out as CO2 gas. So it's an indirect way of getting CO2 out of seawater. But here at the cathode, we're, we can produce um, all the hydrogen that we need based on Faraday's law. And then we also produce here, if you see here in the... Um, at, 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 the, at the cathode here, a hydroxide solution. So all we're dealing with is water and moving ions around with electricity. So essentially when we return this, this water back into the ocean, it's slightly more basic and we've removed all the CO2. 
So this this is what we've done with it. We've taken it from a TRL level three to a TRL level four. And if you we've we scaled it up, we can process a half a gallon a minute now. We've incorporated it into a skid, and we fun, we worked this um, device down at our uh, Key West facility. Um, that's a ter terrible duty to have. And what we've done over the time that we've had it is we've 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 operated the process and essentially watched the pH decrease over time. And you can see it takes quite some time with this technology for the pH to to decrease. But at the same time, we're losing efficiency as we increase the resistance. And so when the when when it increases in resistance, that means we have precipitation on the cathode in a basic solution, and we have to reverse polarity. And therefore, it takes a while for the process to re-equilibrate. And this is a graph of carbon dioxide removal versus pH. And once you're down really below 4.5, I've got 92% removal of the CO2. So how am I going to take the graph on the left and make this a lot faster, get this pH down quicker? And so that's what we focused on for some time. Because when we started this process, we wanted to just demonstrate it. And we used commercial end blocks. And now we have modified those commercial end blocks. If you look at eChem, here on the right, and we've actually, by testing this and changing the insides of the, the system, we have a generation four here where we've been able to get the pH down very quickly upon polarity reversal in this graph, graph on the left, and we've also gotten our resistance down. And what we are, we're targeting is, um, I believe it's 4.5 uh, kilowatt hours per cubic meter of hydrogen. So, so it's important to note that this particular device not only gets the CO2 out of the seawater, I'm producing at the cathode hydrogen too. So I get two for one, and I can produce that hydrogen in the ratio I need to make, make a fuel. So what are the pros of this, this system is I'm processing seawater. I'm just using, like I use a lot of electricity because I'm making hydrogen. It's electrolysis. But I don't have any other additional equipment. If I was getting CO2 out of air, I'd also need large electrolysis equipment to get the hydrogen to make fuel. My con, the cons to this process, I have to move a lot of water, 23,000 gallons of water to, to make a gallon, to get the feedstock to make a gallon of fuel. And everybody's like, whoa. But my alternative is I have to move a lot of air and I also need electrolysis equipment to get this carbon. So let's talk about the con for a second. Um, it, it sometimes can be a showstopper for people to wrap their head around how much water we have to move, but, but we already know how to do this. Um, the Navy's producing 72,000 gallons per day of fresh water on the San Antonio class. We are looking at these Rolls-Royce jet um, uh, pumps here to, to move 500,000 gallons of uh, seawater per minute and, and also with the Corps of Engineers. So we know how to do this and our, our industrial partner as well has in, incorporated these ideas into a, a, a fuel ship design that they have on the table. So this is not a showstopper per se. So what are our next steps? Where are we going with this technology? Well, I showed you a process that will uh, it'll process a half a gallon a minute of seawater. Now We've developed the Generation 5 system here. It is a prototype. Um, it's a 50 times scale up here. And what it's going to do is process 36,000 gallons per day of seawater. So it's going to make us a, more than enough feedstock to produce a gallon of fuel a day. And what's exciting about this is, is now you're working on this large scale with we've already we've got the prototype. It's built. It's been delivered to our contractor, and we're gonna we're gonna put it into this prototype skid, similar to what we already have down at Key West, so that we can function independently. It'll have the pumps. It'll have the um, the computer and control logistics, and so we can just plug it in anywhere we want to go. And so we'll get to test it in a marine environment. We'll get to understand if our design worked. It's fun. Since we've built this prototype, we've already kind of looked at the size and its weight and kind of said, mm, you know, maybe we'll design it a little bit differently. And so the idea is to understand this ECAM at this, this level and this scale, and it sets the stage for how we would, how would, we, we would commercialize it. So 
We hope to have this whole skid delivered to our Key West. It says December of 2017, and I, it's going to be more like January, February. So we're very excited about this. And also what's important about this is you're now at scales to where you can start doing demonstrations. You can look at that, that, that middle piece of technology where I can take the gases, the CO2 and hydrogen coming from the seawater, dry them and compress them and get ready for your next step, which is making fuel. So now that I've talked about our eChem technology, where, are, where is NRL on making fuel? Well, we're, we're very lucky here. What we've done is we are focusing on two catalyst systems. And the first catalyst system, it makes olefins. It's an iron-based type catalyst. And the second, and, and then these olefins are carried forward in a second step to make a jet fuel process. I'd make jet fuel through a zeolite. And then we have another catalyst that we've developed here at NRL, and both of these have been patented. Um, this has actually got an application on it, the molybdenum-based one. And it primarily makes CO, and then that CO is carried forward in a fischer tropsch process to jet fuel. So this is just an idea of what we do in the lab. We take a plug flow reactor. Um, it's a metal tube, and I'll show you a picture of that in a minute. And we fill it with catalyst, and we run a 3 to 1 ratio of hydrogen to CO2 over it, and we analyze it in real time uh, with a GC um, FID. And um, you can see that this is also our mass spectrometer um, uh, values for it as well. Up here is a petroleum-based JP5 that meets all the regulations for a um, uh, to be put on a Navy platform. Um, this is a cam this is actually petroleum drive. This is a Camelina derived one and you see the fingerprint um, is quite different. But and then the, the fuels over here are the things that we've made here at NRL. And we have light ends in the fuel that we've made and those are very easily distilled off. And here in our oligomerization reaction we have high ends. So so we have not put our our fuel through a mill spec but we have we we can show that you know we are in that fingerprint region here the yellow region and the fuel type that we've made and actually at at the at the current time we did this all in laboratory scale so it's very difficult to make enough fuel to put it through um, a, a, a certification for the navy and that will be in the future as we scale up. And so where are we? So what is the, the pros of this? Well, it's really a, a clean burning process. You have, um, it's carbon neutral. I'm taking CO2 out of the environment and I'm burning it, putting it back in the environment. I'm using feedstock coming from seawater. 72% of the globe is covered in, in seawater and they want to get it out anyway. Um, our current price uh, that we did some time ago was about $6 a gallon, and we've worked with our uh, shipbuilding company that suggests that this price could, could go way down, um, depending upon the type of technology we use for an energy source. So the cons, it's not very thermodynamically efficient. I, I, I need a kilowatt to store about 0.6 kilowatt hours. So. Um, that has really been kind of the bugger boot, really, the thermodynamics. However, when, when I go to listen to conferences and we talk about alternative energy, one of the issues with it is it's hard, you can't store it. It doesn't stay long in batteries. The, the capacity for that's uh, difficult. So why not store it as a high energy density fuel that you can use in the current infrastructure we have both commercially and for our DOD? So the alternative, of course, the DOE spent a lot of energy on this as well as DOD with a bio-based fuel from camelina and algae. And, and you still have to take, you compete with food sources. There's other issues with that and getting it around the world globally. And we're looking for a process to make fuel closer to the area of operations. So what is NRL's next step? What have we been funded to do? And where are we going with this? Um, we're actually quite excited. If you look here on the left, it, we started out, and we still are working at a basic science level, a TRL level three in the laboratory. And what we've been able to do is partner with a commercial entity that is expertise in Fisher Tropes um, and making modular reactors. There are very few people, or very few companies, I should say, in this country that are focused on it. One, it was Velosis. 
and the other was is, is formerly Ceramitech. Um, they have now spun off and made their own small business. Um, this this reactor here on the uh, on the right is a is a large reactor incorporated into the skid, and we start out in the laboratory with a half an inch diameter, and it's a nine uh, inch long tube here, and now we're going to a four inch in diameter tube that's seven feet tall. And so what we've done is we've put an iron-based catalyst in here with a 300 times scale up, and we've been able to demonstrate um, on this scale recycling, what happens to the product stream. Um, we've identified areas where going commercial um, with our synthesis has been a problem. So our next step here is really to, um, to redo this catalyst at a higher metal loading. It was very promising. We got up, up to 69% conversion um, and, a, and high selectivity of hydrocarbons. But we really want to give this catalyst a, a better, fair chance and, and get the correct metal loading on it. Um, if you go to the next slide here, we also did the molybdenum-based catalyst in this same reactor here. And um, it was a 10,000-fold scale up. And what we were able to do is demonstrate uh, the same selectivity as we did on the laboratory scale, but we actually got to put this um, this process and re recycle a portion of the product screen, stream and get to 46% recycling, 46% uh, conversion of the CO2 to CO. Now the next steps here is it's a reverse water gas shift. Um, process. What is fantastic about this catalyst is it's operating at 300 degrees C. So it's a low temperature catalyst. I'm getting high selectivity for formation of CO, and I can also um, recycle a portion of the product stream. Now, what I need to do and what we're going to do with this catalyst is we want to push those temperatures higher. We want to go above 300 degrees to about 400 and see if we can, upon recycling, even push that up even higher. And so that all that's fantastic when you're going over the next step to Fisher Tropes to make a fuel. So that's essentially where we are with those technologies and scaling and we still um we're working at these large the, these large scales and what I don't have I'm going to go back <laughs> on you is um, the company that we're working with, it has a two barrel per day process and essentially what they've done with this centerpiece tube here is they've taken this four inch uh, in diameter tube and and to make four barrels a day they've increased it to seven tubes that are 12 feet long so and this is great for the for the navy and for modular technology because the more fuel you need you add more tubes and then so now we need to understand how many e-chems we're going to need how many tubes we're going to need to make to make fuel and the process that we want to do so in summary, NRL is developing modular technologies to make designer fuels using a source of electrical power. And based on our data and the work that we've done, it's, it's cost effective. And it really is a novel way to convert electricity into a portable, storable, versatile, high energy density fuel for the Navy. Um, and I've listed here in the back some of our patents and I, I went forward through. So I appreciate the opportunity to present today, and I'll take any questions and answer them in the Q&A. Thank you.